Today we're going to talk about the greatest 10 watches of all time. Let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Today is all about the greatest watches of all time. Quite a big show, really. The watches that forged the way for everyone else. Those icons that everyone copies. Now, a few days ago, I was online, you know, and this site came up, Gear Patrol. The author of this post had given a countdown of the 50 greatest watches of all time. So me being impatient, like, you know, I scrolled down until I got to number 10. Some of them were a little bit iffy. So today I thought we'd go through what their 10 was and maybe replace them with what my 10 is. Today's show is sponsored by the incredible guys at IFL Watches. I am very fortunate to have got their latest drop. This unbelievable watch is not only a quite a popular watch, the Citizen Ciosa, but here we have a hand-painted picture of a space surfer. How amazingly cool is this? Each one of these watches have been hand painted by what they call a micro painter. The space server watches a symbol of adventure and the unquenchable human spirit, apparently. This space surfer concept watch I think is now sold out, but take a look at their website. They have many Casios and Seikos that aren't limited, that have been IFL'd. They have done some incredible things in the past. And take a look, it doesn't even take the indices off. Incredible. First, we need to understand what makes a great watch. It's a watch or a line of watches that have been possibly going for some time and have been heavily seen in popular culture. Watches that may have saved the industry, changed the industry. Watches that are revered not only by high horologists. Low down ones as well. Watches that have made a huge role to the world. Right, number 10 for this Gear Patrol post was the Apple Watch. Mm. Now, there is no denying that smart watches have become a huge phenomenon in today's society. But if you're calling this a watch, I might as well call this a pocket watch. Will it get people into watches? I don't think so. If Apple came out with an ankle bracelet, some of you out there would buy it. Smart watches do tell the time, and I guess I'm just a little bit bitter about it, you know? With my number 10, I'm gonna give you two. You're lucky, aren't you? Because without this one, you might not have had the other one. And I'm talking about the brand Casio and a little known watch called the F100. Yes, it did adorn the wrist of Sigourney Weaver in Alien, of movie, yeah. but this was a very significant watch. This was the first fully plastic digital watch. And without this one, we may not have had all the other references from Casio through the 80s and 90s, including G-Shock, but one of the most popular Casios of all time, the F91W. Without Casio being able to mass produce their watches, would we have had the CA53W? The Royale! That F100 needs to be there. Back to the chart. <laughs> Number nine is the Patek Philippe Nautilus. Now there's no denying that Gerald Genta and his Genta designs are the reason why we still have luxury watches today. This all due to the quartz crisis back in the 70s when AP and those other brands doubled down on the luxury. Now for me, yes, the Nautilus is quite good looking and quite iconic, but I wouldn't call it one of the greatest, not in the top 10 anyway. Instead of the Nautilus, I'm gonna say a little offshoot brand called Grand Seiko and the Snowflake. Now housed with the incredible spring drive movement, when this watch was released, it was an absolute breath of fresh air. Cold air in the snow. Spring drive combines mechanical functionality with quartz power and regulation. With those two things fusing together, gives you an accuracy in your watch that is unbeatable with just mechanics alone, losing just 10 seconds every year. This was the watch that put Grand Seiko on the map. This was the one that made me aware of Grand Seiko. The artistry from the dial to the case finishing. Unbelievably exquisite looking hands. Grand Seiko, Spring Drive and the Snowflake has to be in this top 10. For me! <laughs> Okay, number eight. Now he's gone a bit avant-garde here. He's gone for the Erlangenzona 
Datagraph. It's a beautiful one, don't get me wrong, and shows the craftsmanship of Swiss watchmaking. But is it one of the greatest of all time? Nah, I mean, it's lovely, but nah. My number eight goes to a brand that, well, without this watch, we would not have dive watches. Not in popular culture anyway. And we are talking about the Blanc Bain 50 Fathoms. A watch designed for military divers. Back in the early 50s, it was the first watch to have a dive time bezel and the first one to look like the dive watches we all know today. It's such an iconic looking watch, so simple, but it has been copied so much through the decades. This one deserves to be on the list. Their number seven is the Blanc Bain 50 Fathom. So we're there, I'm with you, yeah? However, my number seven is gonna go to Breitling and the Navi Timer. In 1952, the owner of Breitling, Willie Breitling, Hello. was approached by the US Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association to create a new chronograph, well, for them. He decided to make a proper wrist instrument, which would enable the pilots to get flight calculations, get your average speed, distance traveled, fuel consumption, and the rate of climb and descent, and the conversion of miles and kilometers of nautical miles. Without this chronograph from the 1950s, I'm not sure we would have too many chronographs today. The Breitling Navi Timer needs to be in an all-time list. Super. Here we go, number six, and they have chosen the Cartier Tank. That's not a bad shout. I think I'll keep that in there. I think Cartier have the most iconic looking dress watch in the wristwatch world. This thing was designed on a tank, would you believe? Thousands upon thousands of brands have copied this style, this iconic looking dial, that cabochon on the crown. This is well and truly cemented in popular culture. A lot of credibility and class. Which is why I'll never own one. And this watch has to go in this 10. Number five for Gear Patrol, the Panerai Luminor. Now I'm not knocking Panerai, okay? You know I love history, and these watches have a very iconic look to them. They've been copied by brands thousands of times, and they have a deep, deep, deep history. Back when these watches were first made, for the Italian military divers, they looked ridiculously big, didn't they? So big that these guys definitely did not wear them outside of the sea. No, they put on normal size watches. However, my number five goes to Gerald Genta. Yeah, here he is, he's come back again. Hello. And it is the Royal Oak. This watch was the savior of Swiss watchmaking, luxury Swiss watchmaking, when the quartz crisis hit. All the other designs from Gerald Genta, for me, are based on this one. And this was the first integrated bracelet sports watch he designed in the 70s that was released. Now it's a little bit sad because these days, Audemars Piguet have become the Royal Oak brand. That design is so iconic and so strong wrong to the brand, they're not really known as that high horology watchmaker anymore. However, without that Royal Oak, they may not have survived the quartz crisis. It's a double-edged sword. Which one's sharper? Um, could you just click that like button, please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. Okay, number four, it's getting intense. And they have chosen the Patek Philippe Reference 1518. A watch that is around 250,000 pounds. Chump change. But this is a watch that came out in the 40s and was the first introduction of a perpetual calendar with a chronograph. Absolutely beautiful and a little bit iconic, certainly for us watch enthusiasts. But should it be in the top 10? No, number four goes to Seiko for me. You wondered when it'd be coming in, didn't you? The 6105, the Willard. The first asymmetrical dive watch made by Seiko and pretty much everyone else. This watch proved not only to the Japanese world, but to the Western world that Seikos can survive any environment you throw at them. It was the watch worn by Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now, and that was true to casting. US soldiers were buying these 6105s because their issued watches were packing up. This asymmetrical case must have proved to Seiko they could pretty much make anything and people would like it. <laughs> that cushion style design is so synonymous with Seiko, that design has sparked thousands of other designs from other watch brands through the years. Iconic looking, heavy in popular culture, copied to death. This is in the top four. <coughs> right, Gear Patrol, top three now. And they have gone for the 
Order my big gay royal oak, okay. There's a lot of money swirling around in this top 10. So yes, I agree, it's gotta be in the top 10, but it's not in my three. At number three is the Rolex Submariner. It's gotta be up there, hasn't it? Probably the most copied watch in the history of watchmaking. And that is not only down to its simple design and its tremendously amazing tooliness, but over the decades, Rolex have become the masters of marketing. Whether it's being associated with James Bond, presidents, Rolex has become the brand for the best of the best. And if you are the best of the best, well, you should own a Rolex. To many people around the world, Rolex is the number one watch brand. And if Rolex is the number one watch brand, with the Submariner being probably one of their most popular watches, other than the Daytona, which didn't make the 10, well, there's no surprise why this watch has been copied one million and one times. But hells yes, the Submariner has to go in the top three. <laughs> Number two for Gear Patrol is the Omega Speedmaster. That's a surprise, isn't it? <laughs> My number two may surprise some of you, but not a lot of you. In 1983, a new watch came out that was designed by the Tough Team of Casio, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I am talking about the G-Shock Square. The first watch built to take a beating. Equipped to be triple 10 tough, to be able to be dropped from 10 meters and still survive, to go at least 10 bar, 100 meters underwater, and to have a 10 year battery life. Without the success of the 1980s G-Shock Square, we would not have the absolute explosion of Casio G-Shocks all around the world. We wouldn't have the Mud Master. We wouldn't have the Mud Man. We wouldn't have the Frog Man. We wouldn't have the Range Man. We wouldn't have any man. Okay, we come to Gear Patrol's number one. Well, it's the Submariner, you know. No surprises there. And hard to argue with. However, did it go on the moon? No, it didn't. You know what did go on the moon? The Omega Speedmaster. To me, the most iconic and the greatest watch of all time. Now, the Speedmaster first came out in 1957 and it had a few changes to it by the time it went to the moon. Now, the amazing thing is with this Speedmaster, you can still buy a brand new watch that has hardly been touched, meaning it still looks like the Speedmaster that went to the moon. When you look at a Speedmaster's dial, it's pretty perfect, isn't it? There's nothing you would change, nothing you would add. Once you see the meat and two veg at 12 o'clock, you may feel a bit differently. And the fact that this watch is still only 30, 50 meters water resistant, that's a bit of a bummer. But this watch is the obvious choice as the all-time greatest watch. <laughs> So there we go, my top 10 greatest of all time watches. I'd love to know what your top 10 are. Stick them in the comments below. Myself and Gear Patrol missed out a lot of great ones like Swatch, Longines, and all the Dirty Dozen watches from World War II. Unfortunately, without war, we may never have put watches on our wrist and would have still told the time from a pocket watch. Like one of these, apparently. Apple Watch. It's not a watch. Thank you for watching till the end. If you want to support the Mad Watch Collector and get a bit more, why don't you click here and join? You want some merch? Get on down there. But if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you click this one? This is, oh, this is sensational. One of my best, yes. Go on, click it. Click, click it.